Yo, what's good? Big Z here, and today I'm gonna to show you guys how to layer your basses to make your bass line sound more full and more powerful. So instead of just having one bass sound in your mix, I'm gonna show you why it's better to have a couple different bass sounds that serve different purposes, and I'm gonna show you how to EQ them correctly and process them correctly so it all sounds like one bass in the end, but it's really three or four different bass sounds. So I just recorded this basic bass line here that we're gonna use throughout the whole video. So right now it's just one bass sound. I'm gonna use these mini notes and this bass line to layer the basses together and make this bass line way more interesting. So I usually use four layers for a bass. I use a main bass layer, then a plucky bass layer, stereo bass layer and then a sub layer underneath all that so four layers so right here i'm going to use that sound i just showed you as the main bass layer so what i usually do with the main bass layer is eq it so it gets out of the way of the sub and the plucky layer and the stereo layer that i'm going to put on top of it So now this bass is kind of just taking up the main bass frequencies from like 150 hertz up and I'm rolling off the highs because that makes room for the plucky bass I'm going to add later. So throughout this video, instead of focusing on the exact bass sounds I'm using, focus on the type of sounds I'm using and the purpose it's serving in the mix as a whole. So this layer is just kind of like a straight saw bass and it's just good for filling out the low end of like a main bass sound. All right, so on top of this, let's add a plucky layer. So I'm gonna drag this MIDI over and copy it down. So what we're looking for in a pluck bass is something with a lot of attack that's gonna sound interesting in the higher end of the frequency spectrum. So I'm gonna use some kind of Nexus preset for this. I'm gonna go through my favorite basses in Nexus and find one that works for what I'm looking for. All right, so this deep donk preset has some cool attack and cool characteristics to it. So I think I'm gonna try to use this for the bass. We can always change it later if we don't like it. So for this plucky layer, the main bass already has the lower end of the frequency spectrum covered. So what I'm gonna wanna do is open up an EQ. I'm gonna wanna take out a lot of the low end, like everything below like 350 or 400 Hertz. And then I might want to roll off the highs slightly. So what this is doing is leaving a lot of room for the main bass to sit underneath this bass in the frequency spectrum. So now what I'm going to do is take the volume of this bass all the way down and slowly mix it in with the original bass that we have. And if you want to add even more attack and pluckiness to this layer, you can add a transient designer. So I'll use a Waves transient designer and just add some attack to the sound. So next up we want to add the stereo bass, whereas the first two layers were kind of right in the middle of the stereo field, this one's going to be wider in the stereo spectrum. So if you're listening on nice headphones or monitors like these, then you'll be able to hear this bass better and it'll widen up the whole track. I'm going to copy the MIDI down just like I did last time because they're all going to play the exact same bass line and I'm going to look for a serum sound that's wider. Alright, so I found this bass that I think would be pretty good for the stereo spectrum. So what I'm going to do is mess with it a little bit and EQ it a little differently than the last two to make it fit together with all of them. Here's what the bass sounds like. So first of all, I'm going to want more voices of unison than this. So I'm going to want it nice and wide. I'm going to 
gonna take off this plucky layer because we already have the plucky layer down. Yeah, that'll sound nice and wide now. So now what I'm gonna do is take a dimension expander and make it a little wider. And then when I go into my EQ now, I still don't want it taking up any of the low end because the main base is just supposed to be right in the middle of the mix for the low end. But I'm going to cut everything above like 300 hertz probably. And to take this a step further, I'm going to use some mid side EQ to take out the middle of the stereo spectrum with this bass. So I'm going to go into channel mode on this fab filter EQ and go to mid side mode. A lot of different EQs have this option. So then when I add a point to my EQ, you can select mid or side. So in this case, I'm going to select mid and I'm going to want to take out a good amount of the mid. So it's just the sides of the sound in the stereo field. So now that that's finished, I'm going to do the same thing as I did with the last bass. I'm going to turn the volume all the way down and then slowly mix it in with the other basses. Alright, now the bass as a whole is sounding pretty full as opposed to that one layer that we started with. So now I'm going to do the last layer, which you probably won't be able to hear on a phone or even a laptop because it's the sub layer, but I'll just show you how I usually do it real quick. So because I've already made space for the sub, none of these basses go below like 120 hertz. I'm going to drag the same MIDI file down to my sub layer. And for my sub layer, I usually just go in Serum and use the sub oscillator and either use like a sine sub or a saw sub. I guess for this one I'll do a saw sub. Then we're gonna take out all the high end of this bass. So now it's really just taking up the frequency spectrum from like 40 hertz to 100 hertz. So I'm gonna do the same thing and mix this sub in with the rest of the basses. So just to recap real quick, we started with this one bass sound. And after using all the layers, it turns into this. So then the cool thing about this is once you have all your layers set up, you can audition different sounds to change the overall character of the bass. So if I want a new pluck layer, I can go into my pluck layer and mess around with some different presets and stuff and see how it sounds. Alright, so that's how you layer bases. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to follow me on Instagram and Spotify below to stay up to date with what I'm doing. Other than that, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.